I also think uh, discussing problems that are specific to WordPress, so um, particularly front page web engines is a big one. Um, what? Technically, it's just not fixed. Well, I would like to know what the fix is so I can fix it for myself. Um, okay. And so, yeah, I don't know. Discussing things that are specific to WordPress websites, like front page web mentions is a big one. Um, also, comment spam with Bridgie. So, at false, false negatives is a big problem false that I have. Uh, false negatives, so things going to spam that front that are legit bridgy web mentions having trouble with that. So and and but you know, but so same token uh, comment spam is a huge problem on WordPress. So we, we need to need to have one. Already have one. It is where? Uh, that would be etherpad.indieweb.org slash WordPress dash truck. Lovely. We're here. It's more of a visual than a word. What etherpad dot what? Etherpad.indieweb.org slash WordPress dash shrug. I will also paste it into the IndieWeb. We, we may not be able to get to everything, but are we listening at least some of the questions that we have? I think that's a good way to go about it, is start with questions. And we may not be able to get to them all. But like, yeah. so, so my question would be, what is the canonical introductory text that you give to a new WordPress user to, to get on the IndieWeb? I think that has changed significantly. Last year. And well, great to know what that is. Well, what we tried for was um, basically on the wiki getting started in WordPress. Yeah. So the wiki sucks, though. The wiki if, serves a really good purpose for developers and it's absolutely terrible for Gen Z people. Yeah. So we will, we will, we will, there's a session to fix that. <laughs> as long as what you're telling me is the latest and greatest is on the wiki, then the question is answered. Yeah. yeah. Good. There, there probably could stand to be a, uh, an actual page. But right now, it's sort of in the collaborative effort on the So I'm putting in the questions and topics on the Etherpad, and as they get answered, if there is an answer to the question, put it in the Etherpad. Like, okay. uh, so, it sounds like the canonical text to give people an introduction is on the wiki already. Yeah, yeah I'm getting started. It's either getting started in or getting started with. Like, I'll find it. I'm sure you find it. And beyond that, there is, of course, the Indie Web plugin, which is supposed to tell you which things you might want to consider installing. Can you? Give us, so we have a state of work. I think that might be a good place to start. Oh, I, can, I can try. That might be a good. OK, um, WordPress 4. Uh, the state of the web in WordPress 4 is non-existent. We can move on from there. <laughs> uh, the core team is aware that the web concepts exist. Um, but there hasn't been enough interest from the core team in anything other than a few minor adjustments. So core is non-existent, basically. Basically, no, no efforts going on at this time. Um, speaking as the pings and trackbacks component maintainer, the most thankless job in the WordPress community, um, I, I am toiling in that job in relative obscurity because nobody actually cares to respond to anything about pings and trackbacks, so, which is the closest thing to web mentions that we have. So uh, beyond that, there are the plugins. So you have the Indie Web plugin, which is a community plugin which recommends other plugins and also has one function that it actually performs other than that, which is setting up your identity. So it does run the links, which would allow you to log into the auth and connect your website and view other websites and log into the web, which is basically the most basic thing you can do when I'm working with it. It also has some nice icons. If you want all of these little social icons, it'll do that. Uh, beyond that, um, that links to a bunch of other plugins. The official um, web mention plugin. Which um, handles uh, what's the basic plumbing of web mentions, but not the presentation. The presentation is handled by another plugin called Semantic Impacts, which was separated out because it was considered to be half baked. It has not been considered to be baked, so it has not ever been. So, right now, Semantic Linkbacks enhances not just web mentions, it actually does pingbacks and trackbacks if somebody actually sent one of those. And it handles the turning your web mention into a reply, like an RSVP, what have you. Uh, beyond that, we have the 
just released this week, uh, WordPress Microformats 2, which is a plugin. If your theme doesn't support Microformats 2, it will try to make your theme support it without actually having theme support. <laughs> Although even in the title it says if you're, it is probably better to have a theme with support. Yeah. Uh, beyond that, we have let's see, post kinds, which basically tries to create the various types of posts that are part of the indie web. They can't be called post types because that's already something in WordPress. Question, follow up question. Yes. Are there two or three recommended beginner themes that would be easiest for yes. beginners to use? Two, probably. There's a third, but I wouldn't recommend it because my aesthetic style is much desired. You saw my website, it's white on white. <laughs> but that, that's hard to read, yes. Yeah, I know. So there are two themes that are micro formats client. One would be set pressing. The other one is independent publisher, uh, which has very basic support, but it is marked up correctly, or at least in my opinion, although there's some data as to where your age entry should be. But it's a good debate. Uh, Sendrest, I think, has the additional advantage that it's also um, responsive. It is. And uh, let's see, beyond that, on the plugin side, there's the MicroPub plugin, which creates a MicroPub server for your WordPress installation. The syndication links plugin, which basically shows what sites do a posse to, assuming that whatever you posse to that supports it or you manually entered it. And let's see, what else are we missing? Can, can I ask another question then? Yeah. Sorry, did, did, if it's out of order. No, okay. Um, how many plugins are we at so far? Three, four. Um, you, were, you were typing where you Six. Can. Six plugins. Okay. Seven actually can include the IndieWeb plugin, which like is it, a plugin of plugins. All of those as a package. Right. The IndieWeb plugin installs all of the plugins we've just mentioned. Yeah, the new version actually allows you to click through the repository as opposed to the old version which tries to install them itself. Oh, so it, it it points you to the plugins. It doesn't actually install them. If you click the button, it will install, but it uses the installer built in where it used to actually use right. some of the installers. Yeah. We try to make it look more natural. So, yeah. so does it okay. install the latest versions of all these plugins, or is it pinned to specific versions? It installs the stable version, which is the WordPress the version. That's why it be listed as just get up. You felt that too many people were getting confused by it. Yeah, so, yeah. so um, the two plugins, that, um, were, the micro format two just got added yesterday. This is now um, got approved in the workshop of the repository, and the web press this plugin was submitted. So somebody approved it, it'll go back into the plugin as recommendation. So that's so another one on the list. Same question then. How many of these plugins work with no interaction, or how many? How much you can sum them on a setup in each one of them? Well, let's say, um, other than visiting the settings page and just deciding what settings you want. For, what I'm, what I'm yeah. getting at is for a Gen 2 type person, you would install them all, and you just want to have your stuff work so that when you just make your posts and do your replies, it just works out of the box. They, they all have them. sensible defaults. So no, my question. It generally should work out of the box if you don't want to customize them in settings. So I think that covers most of the ones that are there. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not necessarily counting my location plugin, which I count as a Purely one. So, yeah. Is Bridgie Publish your part of Oh, did I forget Bridgie Publish? Yes. Bridgie Publish doesn't do anything, though. It's basically a UI wrapper around Bridgie. That's something. So, it, uh, by itself, all it does is interface with Bridgie. So, if Bridgie went away, it would be nothing. Mm -hmm. okay. So, it just basically gives you a checkbox where it's, it's called result. Bridgie, Bridgie Publish. Publish. So, basically, if you check the if you check the checkbox, it will send the web mention to Bridgie to tell you to publish the page. So, It'll also pull back the link and actually display it. Right. If you have syndication links installed, which is what you need to display. So all of those are the one are let's say recommended, if not required, plugins. So I guess that covers this database. Like and uh, someone taking notes. Uh, yeah, yeah, we are. So what else would be questions here? There seems to be more questions coming up. I'm, I'm just writing in interesting questions so that okay. we don't have to run out of topics. Oh, well, let's see. The next one on here, uh, Gutenberg. Um, I can give a personal opinion. Uh, it's worrisome because... Maybe start with what it is. Yeah, what is Gutenberg? Yeah, what is Gutenberg? Gutenberg is the 
new post editor that they're currently it's a plugin, but it's supposed to be the one that will be released in WordPress 5.0. It is uh, basically heavily JavaScript. So the current one falls back very nicely if you don't have JavaScript. It's, the JavaScript in it is mostly enhancements. But the new one would be pretty much all JavaScript. It's very JavaScript heavy, yeah. And that's sort of a problem if you don't want that much JavaScript. And the, their philosophy is that everything is broken into content blocks, which basically are parsed out of the content and separated and then merged back in when you save it. Which is sort of an interesting idea because the way that all of the indie web plugins work is they, with the exception, excuse me, the microphone, which is the accurate moment. Yeah, um, all the, those plugins dynamically generate the additional content and wrap it around them, uh, the actual content box that appears in the WordPress editor. Yeah, the, so it's sort of a different philosophy where it basically keeps everything in, which probably is better for compatibility in there. The notion, though, of, WordPress, of Gutenberg is that you should be able to create your own block types that appear in the editor. So you can drag in new blocks. So you could say, I want a location content block, or I want a recipe content block. I'm thinking that that's what they're intending, but I'm not entirely sure if that's I, true. I've, I've looked at it, and they're not 100% sure. Yeah, I think they're, 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 they're iterating and kind of yeah, trying to figure it out. It creates the problem that everything in the old interface goes away. Right. Which, My understanding is that things like post kinds and widgets and short codes are all just going to go away. Basically, yes. Or post formats. Post formats, that's how, yeah. But if they make it extensible, people can always add stuff in. That's right. So it may mean a lot of changes in the future. There's at least one more version in between before that thing becomes a certainty. So we'll probably know more when it gets closer to that. Let's see. Um, the best path forward to accelerate adoption of indie web and WordPress? That one's sort of a group question. I don't think it's really a state of what's going on right now. It's what's going on in the future. Um, Chris were on, um, he's very active, and he's trying to go to various word camps to spread the word about indie web. Probably the best place to find people interested in WordPress. Yep. So if I can then ask maybe Clearly new question. My issue is as I moved to Indie Web, I wasn't prepared for the sheer volume of content. It was a, it was encouraging me to put on my website. My website's a very slow website. I have my articles. I don't want people to see all my tweets when they come to my website. So I tend to want to create a place to throw all this stuff in. Which, so it's there, but by default it just shows up. And so I find myself having to start to say, how do I change the default of my WordPress site? How do I you know? And there's all sorts of content structuring issues that are created by the indie web movement. And so, again, fairly new web, uh, indie web, sorry, uh, WordPress question, but is there a way to kind of structure my page like with them, which is basically has all the different, you know, threads or silos, and just do that easily so I don't have to. Yeah, well, except maybe, yeah, it's possible. I, I assume it's possible. It works that way, so yeah. 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 It, with what's built into WordPress, it's very easy. Your front page which is no longer being everything, yeah. being a actual static page, which is one of those things. Yeah. Then the front page becomes a static page, and then you can basically put a menu with all the different types. Assuming that I write the menu myself. Well, the menu, um, the menus are actually an option of WordPress, so you can create a menu. Yeah, and but it mostly seems to support a menu placement somewhere. But you can also just hide a tag or a category from the front page. Uh, your Twitter post with microblog or something. Yeah, like, there are there options. Uh, either you're using a tag or you're using the post kinds of plugin. There's an archive for each individual post I'm, I'm again getting ready for the session we're going to have later, which is how do we get Gen 2 people up and running? And in addition to all these plugins, it seems to me we're going to say, and by the way, you're going to want a setting page. You're going to want a menu. Here's how you make it. And again, it's all pretty straightforward stuff, right? It's just that we just need to kind of document this. Uh, we have I mean, one of the one of the things I love about Indie Web is you know, that control thing, and there are for some of these things like, do I want my status updates to show in my main homepage? There's this range of opinions, and for many of them, sometimes I don't see a clear 
majority opinion. And so, which makes this kind of tutorial, like we can write and you know, build this great tutorial, it will have some of those opinions baked in. Well, and knowing that some of those questions are going to exist and be common, it's the type of thing that when you install, like to me, when you install the IndieWeb plugin, it might make sense for it to interrogate you a little bit. Be like, hey, what kind of content are you actually interested in putting on? Oh, this kind, this kind, and this kind. Cool, what kind do you want on your homepage? Well, this one and this one, but not this one. Neat. Well, yeah. go ahead and set it up for you. Like, yeah. Gen 2P, I mean, I like that, right? I, that's the thing that, that I don't like hunting through settings. People, You don't know where to go first or second, but knowing what the common questions are, picking saying defaults, that's like 80% of good user experience right yeah. there. Totally. So I don't think there'd be any objection from any of the people who interviewed to that plugin for there to be some sort of wizard that actually sets you to a bunch of settings. But that plugin just, just happens? happens. I uh, know the Indie Web plugin, which is basically the onboarding. Yeah, I think that that's a great way to put it. Like the Indie Web plugin should be the onboarding engine for all these other things. That's a good way of putting it. Yes. Yeah. The basic part of it is what are the questions we have to write down, and actually figuring out what the, the answers to those questions do is a little bit. And this cool needs to be taken offline and not be answered here, but to your point, yeah, we can identify two or three common styles. We don't have a one size fits all. Like in, like, I would call it the the fully siloed style versus the fully stream style versus the pick your own adventure style. You know, and then you know, if we could then just have a couple of quick choices and then just have that happen, that would be fantastic. Even though if we have to default to pick your own adventure as the as the V one version, that's perfectly fine too. At least it says what you want to show up and so forth. So these are the sub. We'll take this offline. And I'm saying it, it should be easily doable. Yes, yeah. I don't think it ever occurred to anybody. In fact, we probably should write that down, not just in here, but at some yeah. point in the NDWF and plug in as an issue. Yeah, that's a good idea. Should we create a section in here for action items? Like, I, I would. I'll go back it. and create the issue. About front page mentions. Yeah. Okay, What's um, the fix? As of the last version, and um, the discussion settings is actually a way to set a specific page to receive all of your front page mentions. Previously, on, it was a developer option. On the web mentions plugin, or on? Yeah. Well, it's actually on the if in the web mentions plugin. It now yeah. adds a setting to under settings discussion. That yeah. Has a pull down of all of your pages. Yeah. You select the page to redirect all of your. So um, this is maybe going to come up more in the Gen 2 discussion, but like this is one of those things that would be nice to, to like, I had to have Aaron explain to me what was happening with front page mentions, and then also knowing that there's a solution, like it would be nice to see this documented in a way that's easy to look up when you're like, why is my website doing this thing? I don't understand why it's doing. Like that would be. Yeah. Right now, the only way to know if that setting exists is to either read the documentation on it or find the setting. Yeah. And it goes back to there's no page that really goes through step by step how to add them. The feature just came out so it hasn't been added to the getting started the page yet. Uh, also it doesn't include a function to display them on your home page that you have to enter yourself. It just redirects them somewhere where you can find them. What's the difference between web mention for comments and web mention? I have both plugins. Uh, web mention for comments is an experimental plugin. Or testing one feature. I'm glad to know that I have yeah, it's experimental a, plugins installed yeah, that I don't remember what The it idea was if, it, if the feature ever became stable to the point of, at which it was worth using, then it would merge into the regular system. It's uh, not ready for that. So this seems to be a common pattern that we've seen with WordPress for a long time, that where the developers have liked to proliferate plugins. But users definitely don't like it in a common law. Should we reconsider this this general strategy? Well, we did. Um, the web mention form plugin, which generated a web mention form, was folded into the web mention form. But then this one was created again as a new assembly plugin. Yes, okay. but the agreement was when that plugin becomes stable, it would be merged in. Right, and that seems to have been the strategy we've used for a few years, yeah. and it's you know, consistently causes confusion with 
users. So I wonder if we should maybe start doing new things in existing plugins instead of having new plugins. Well, with the web mentions for comments, the problem was it was part of the suggested um, indie web installer. That's why people kept installing it. It's no longer suggested. Nothing in GitHub is suggested any longer. Does it come up in a search of the plugin directory? What, the indie web installer? No, the web mentions. Indie web for comments needs to be I know, because it's only in a GitHub repository. All right. And that was the way that we tried to address the issue. Nothing in GitHub will show up in, as recommended at all. I think that makes sense. So if it's on GitHub, there are so the answer might have been that it's already been solved. On the other hand, I mean, to get, uh, if you put something in as an experimental feature in an existing plugin, you'll get a hell of a lot more That's testing and well. users, even even if you have to make it opt in and tell people this is still alpha. So I mean, I I wonder if there is much value at all to proliferating plugins. One way or the other, it has to be kind of separate, but it can be branched or something. Uh, they're opt just opt in, right? Yeah, um, some of them are just. Oh, that particular one is sort of abandoned. Oh, cool. There's a so Nobody's been touching it for a while, okay. so it's, that's one of the reasons it got delisted. Nobody was updating it. Sure. It's so, I guess I'm thinking if we, if we want to put out some guidance for how to develop new stuff in WordPress. Uh, yeah, it's another thing about this. Okay, well, I, I would probably agree with you that some things are probably better off letting people experiment with. So we, we only recently got past the let's uh, minimize the number of settings for people. Uh, the problem of anybody who couldn't change a setting by writing a program wasn't able to change So a lot more of them have to the top, including the home page mention one, which basically there had been a filter there for a long time that would allow people to change it, but there was never an interface to actually set that filter. So there now is. Okay, do we want to try to get through some more questions? The Webmins plugin thing is failing for me, but we don't need to do a lot of tech support for my problem right now. What, the new homepage thing? Uh, yeah, I can't even update the plugin. It's just failing. Okay, that, not being able to update the plugin is a little bit. Well, that's yeah, we can yeah, but that would take a little later. At least before the end of the weekend. I may have to update now. My, my personal biggest interest for being here is to figure out how to make it such that more people are, so there are more people using WordPress than any other content management system. Yeah. And I want it to be such that more and more percentage of the people who are using WordPress are using the indie web stuff, right? Because it's, why would I not turn that on? That's the thing I absolutely want, right? Um, so that's kind of my biggest reason for being here is trying to figure out like, what can I do to make that what can we do to make that happen? Um, and I think the onboarding thing is helpful. I think that would be amazing. Yeah, and it's been, a, it's been a big problem. It was a few years ago, I remember that there was a session at this very event that I was not, when I was not visiting, but it was about um, putting together a, basically a more visual guide. Are there any uh, WordPress wizards or onboarding that are like, be a good model? Not that I know of, but you know, there are a lot of Well, there's that cat that teaches you HTML on NeoCities, so I yeah. think that we should have a cat that teaches WordPress anyway. There are a new web cat volunteers. It's true. Right? Jetpack is sort Jetpack of. Jetpack would be obvious. Yeah, Jetpack, yeah, Jetpack is. So who, who maintains Jetpack? Is it WordPress? It's automatic. The company that's on So how do we bribe them? Well, I mean, Brandon Craft is. I, I, yeah, he's already looking. Brandon, yeah, Brandon Kraft is a developer who works at Automatic on Jetpack, who is explicitly stated that he's interested in helping. So does he like good scotch? I mean, <laughs> what is the... That's one way to go about it. So for, <laughs> for additional reference, DreamHost is a partner of Automatic's for Jetpack. So we actually pay Automatic, an undisclosed sum, <laughs> to provide Jetpack Premium, or whatever it is they call it, the paid version to our WordPress customers for free. So they get it bundled. Um, and so we have a person who works there who their job is to make us happy, right? Not make us happy, but to help, help us work together, right? So again, though, I can only really ask for things that users ask for. I mean, I can ask for things that users don't ask for, but then the immediate question will be, oh, cool, how many are users asking for it, right? Um, so I, I can certainly help. But I don't feel like I feel like community is going to be the best way, if all possible. 
Um, we already filed one you know, issue requesting that um, Jetpack Publicize, which is their posse yeah. service, would actually return the URLs of anything that it posses back to the local WordPress. Yeah. Right now, the only place you can get that data is on WordPress.com, which right. means it can't be displayed, used, or otherwise online. Right. But uh, the last report was that may be more complicated than you want initially. But I think that's the only one that you can so far. But he's only been um, commenting for the last couple of weeks, so I'd like to give him some time before I criticize the fact that he's only done one thing. So then when I got WordPress on my site, it was that classic, you know, I FTP, FTP'd it across, installed through directories. It didn't work. I had like, there was just really a lot of sleeping around. Obviously, the, the DigitalOcean approach is far better, where you just check a box and you just get it. Um, are those the two real flows? You either have a hosting service that just does it for you, or you've got to go through this FTP call that I did. I mean, is there anything in between? Uh, well, basically, um, there are other alternatives to FTP, but it's either yeah, it's either basically that a low-level install where you're in a shell of some sort of kind, or a high-level install where whoever your provider is sort of sets it up and just gives you a blank to do traffic site. I think again, if you want to get Gen two people on. Let's, I don't even think I want to waste the time working on the shell side of things. That's just way beyond. That's for the, the, what we should just say. Go to DigitalOcean or 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 right. check the box and you're just done. Yeah, it's, in deference to the person who's capable of working, it's fine. So you should add three plus. Well, but it's fine. Like my, to me, the goal is more people who use WordPress and the more indie web support that gets into core or more people opt into it. Better off everybody gets, including yes. Dream Rising, right? Exactly. Rising. So I'm not too precious there, about there that. There are dozens no of, that. of WordPress hosted services. Tons of them. And, and so I'm just talking about the ones that were yeah. there. But uh, it, it wouldn't hurt, maybe, for us on our page to at least say, by the way, here's a couple you can so look at. One yeah. thing that that we're going to do is, as a result of our partnership with um, with Microblog, um, is that I actually talked to Manton about at some point. Hopefully this year we're going to create. We want to create a one-click installable version of WordPress that is pre-configured to do the right things to integrate with Micro.blog. And as a result of Micro.blog being IndieWeb from the beginning, kind of you know, means that means you'll get you'll get MicroPub, you'll get uh, Web Mention, right? And so there's all the things that 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 you guys have worked on. We'll probably have to enable there anyway, right? So we'll have to make that better by then. Yeah, that's. I think that's going to have to happen, right? But that's fine. That's that's a good thing. Um, we always want more attention on that. Hopefully, more volunteers. Right. What uh, packaging for it, or how are you going to do that? Or that? So we have our own. It's it's. We have our own um, one click installer system, basically. Um, it's not particularly interesting or exciting, right? All of them open source, but. Um, and it wouldn't really work anywhere but on our infrastructure, but basically you click the button that makes it so it goes off and it downloads the right packages, puts them in the right place, gets the right plugins, registers it with our system so that we can do automatic updates and automatic upgrades and all this stuff. Um, but yeah, that's the notion. Is Because right now we have two versions. You can get what we call WordPress and then what we call WordPress Deluxe, which is a terrible name, but, but basically it's WordPress plus a few interesting plugins. And if you get our DreamPress, which is like a managed WordPress thing, you don't get choice. You just get you just get what our curated set of things uh, for now. It's basically the locked up version where only things you guys trust. Well, we're a little bit different than most of them. We let you do whatever you want, but it's you know we have a curated set of plugins that we install. Right? You can a lot of work managed WordPress hosts, they don't let you do that. They they basically say we're committed to provide performance and speed and reliability for you, so you can't touch it, right? Don't don't look at your WordPress site when you see that fall over. Um, <laughs> we don't care. It's like you can shoot yourself in the foot all you want, go ahead. Um, but yeah, the conf the pre configured stuff is just that makes sense. Jetpack. This was a related question. Uh, so we can actually I mean you know, these really locked down services, we can make them in the web too. Yes. So uh, how much do we care about that versus pushing on the four semi self hosted versions or both people? Are? If you get Jetpack, you get WordPress.com. Pretty much. Oh, sure, yeah, okay. So, <laughs> I, no, I mean, we can make them externally. We still can't make them anyway. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, 
Bridgie can give WordPress.com or gives WordPress.com my benches now. Yeah. Right. Uh, you can write a similar bridge for microphones. Yeah. Um, it's not the prettiest, but it's doable. Do we care, or should we push on the more self-hosted side instead? That strikes me. We're talking into marketing questions. Oh, okay. I, uh, I, no, no, no. Which is perfectly fine. I just say, is that like, who's your customer? Yeah. I, as a product person, feels that you have an order of magnitude more Gen two people than you have Gen one point five. Yes. Which to me would imply that you don't care about self hosting as much. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't want to cross a fight. I'm just, no, just, 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 no. that's true. And yeah. so, so to me, I would argue that if we really want to grow the base, we should be working with. All these companies just, just do it out of the, out of the box. Effectively, how close can I get to a with no, you know, sign up? Um, that to me is where the big number. No, no, I, I agree with you 100. percent That's uh, the right thing. Trying to compromise yeah. and doing it externally and converting to the means that you're creating the experience. Right. Probably better ways to convince the most people plug in a state one up to allow it to be installed. Yeah. Okay. Want it to want it to be at a point where people can sign up for a hosting service somewhere or for a WordPress. Provider, yeah. give me a, a indie web. Give me a website that provides these features that indie web enables, right now. And I want to pick my pretty theme, and I want to pick, you know, my domain and go. And then it uses WordPress under the hood. It uses all the indie web plugins. Everything is glued together and works great. But the Gentoo user doesn't have to care about it at all. Like but I don't. Our, our ultimate goal, I would think, would be that you don't even test. It just comes with indie. With correct. The, correct. The, the, but I assume pragmatically. We're going to have to say that it's going to be a two-step process. You ask for you ask for WordPress first, and then there's a checkbox or something that says now Indify it. Unfortunately, I mean again, I don't know what the pragmatics are, but I would love to just just have it just be a two-step. Well, I think having it depend on being indie web, like I think it needs to be about here are the capabilities that are added, right? It has to be you want to check those boxes because you want rich interactions with other websites. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course I want rich interactions with the websites. Yeah. Yeah. Web mention support. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. We're not great at naming things, just to be clear. Yeah, yeah. After pub sub hub up, sorry. <laughs> no, it's, I, it's, it's web sub. It's web sub now. Oh, that's which like is, the original name. Yeah. So, no, no, fair enough. So, fair enough. So then the question would be is, do you think that's what we'll what the dream house would do? The dream house have four of us? Because like it would I would hate for there to be four checkboxes, really? No, I would want it to be one. Yeah, just, just web web. Yeah. Basically enable um what and we brand it somehow, right? Yeah. Open web, you know, power, whatever. <laughs> and, you know, you get rich interactions, uh, well, support I, I for all these cool that. publishing tools. Is, 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 I want to have one of the indie web fun pack. There you go. Yeah. That's so got to be basically it. all of the crap that I couldn't justify putting by itself. Yeah. Uh, we'll call it Supersize It. You just check that, right? Uh, but WordPress, if we're not super we're, sizing. If we're Make not your careful. website better. We'll tell you how later. Yes. Yeah. If we're not careful, though, some website will brand it. So if we want to get ahead of this, we should come up with a name. And I, I would call it an action item. I mean, again, we could call it just maybe web. That might be enough. I mean, but we should agree that's what we're going to call it. I feel like every indie web camp I emerge with, we really need to get more marketers on board. <laughs> That's the action item at the I end of every webcam. I will jokingly seed over the name Indie Web Plan. I think channeling context and what you would say here is that we growth is good, we want more people, we want more Gen 2 people. We want it to be ready for them when yeah. they come find it. Good experience. And it kind of is, kind of isn't all all the way yet. Yeah. I well, so. And that's where I come back to the documentation problem, yep. which is that like really simple things that are like really obvious to folks that are working on the developer and are quite simply like things like front page comments, web mentions and stuff like that. Like if you can't get that question answered by Googling, then are we ready for those Gen 2 people? Because I'm a very confident Googler, but it's only because Eric Brecky is two feet away from me that I'm able to like get answers to these questions. And that's not a, it's not a sustainable growth model for Gen 2 people. So. We just pack everybody into our home office. Office isn't that big. Well, the question goes back to um, if you look at things, um, there are a few efforts that have come in the community, not for WordPress. Like we had for a long time the microformats with you. Recently, we had microformats.io, which is a presentation version of that. Mm -hmm. So the question is, do we need basically a presentation version for WordPress? Yes. And the question is, does anybody want to take that one on? No. <laughs> 
But on, on another level, you almost don't want, and maybe this is generation three thing, but then you almost don't want people to even know this is the implementation uh, detail. It's just like, you know, yeah. it's, it just can't, it just, just, you know, like, so if you go back to the original WordPress, where, you know, Matt was involved with XFN right out of the box yeah. and he embedded open, you know, like structured semantic, you know, relatively good age because he cared a lot about it, right? And so everyone who created a WordPress blog was creating basically best practice up to a point anyway. Yeah. And they didn't know and didn't care, right? So to some extent, it's kind of more of a product problem than a, yeah. than a marketing problem even in that, you know, people will just use a great product that under the hood does all this stuff and they don't even know and they don't care, just, you know, because if this stuff actually makes for a better product by integrating better into their lives online with Facebook and Twitter or Instagram or whatever, mm. that they're obviously going to want that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It should almost not feel like a different thing. It should just, should just be the way. Well, that's, right? that's the core option, which is advocate for more effort in core. The problem is the focus in core is in a completely different area right now. I, know, I think it's the polished thing. I mean, there are plenty of examples of WordPress plugins or features that are very polished and have wide adoption that are not in core, right? I mean, Jetpack is a great example. And for all these managed hosts, your dream, uh, dream host, DigitalOcean, I mean, you, if you have this checkbox, it's checked by default and it adds one plugin that works well automatically. It doesn't matter if it's in core. I mean, your Gen 2 and Gen 3 know or care a lot less what's in core. But I don't know that matters. Well, I was talking about the markup. So yeah, there's certain things that have to. Markup I, is really hard to do. There's things that are really difficult. There's things that are just generally speaking the way that WordPress works that makes it hard. Like right now, there's only a couple themes, right? That ain't gonna fly for my customers, right? They're gonna want to be able to make every, you know, make their website look like whatever they want, right? That's why people get a website. They want the identity. They want to make it look pretty, you know. And uh, and that's why I think the open pull request for underscores. How many teams has been open with the Vector Formats 2 discussion, which is currently installed for the 15th month. But anybody wants to comment on that one, but I mean, but an open request by one of the developers there for actual comments. But there's yeah. also the, what is the UF2 plugin that adds the mark yeah. markup to we any just, theme, right? We just released that to the repository to try to get more, but it's only so far it can go. You can't look into everything. I don't know. I mean, feel like mine, mine is packed to bits and really ugly. It, it looks into a hell of a lot. So I, I don't know. Is yeah. that true? It's good enough. No, I'm saying it, it is good enough for some basic things. But as I said, you, there are there are some areas since you don't know what a theme is going to do. Yeah. Without knowing what your theme is doing, it's hard for a plugin to figure out: is the theme using this feature? Can I modify that feature? Is it using something in a non-standard way? So like microformats one are in core. And so does that mean that there are lots of themes? Lots of themes that, that do their own thing and just don't think they, they lose the microformats one because they did their own thing? Uh, most of them just copy and paste it from somewhere else and they don't even know what they're doing. That's sort of the strange thing. So you don't really know. Did the person care about it or did they just copy from somewhere else and assume that that was the right way to do it? Are they styling H entry, which well, I mean, I think creates a problem because then you're styling something that has to be moved around possibly. And if you keep it where it is, then you have the problem of entry content to see content and where everything is placed. And then if somebody put in a plugin that adds like the content, suddenly your post has some of these added. But I would go back to the classic you know, stati statistical versus mathematical thing. Everything is possible. Anything can happen. But if we're talking about Gen 2 people, none of that should happen. So, so therefore, can we say that for the, statistically speaking, that actually will be small enough of a concern that we don't care if it even fails. I mean, we, it just, just I'm, what I'm trying to do is define the problem away. I mean, like I said, I'm, you're not wrong. I just, I would claim that you're not statistically valid. It, 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 that's a polite way of saying it. It's not, I'm not disagreeing with you. Okay. It's more with the large amount of names, it's just impossible to predict what will work and will not. So we can hope. And that's why we try to, but we don't know because we just, Option. We just talked today about like the fact that we woke up child themes puts us into like the crazy category, <laughs> right? Wait till you hear about grandchild themes. <laughs> you know, so so one one point might be is if you just use WordPress out of the box with with almost most themes, this sh stuff should work. If it doesn't, you're now in Gen One category. 
Sorry. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's not like you can't fix it. It's just you just go. You just it's, you just have to go read some, read some more FAQs to that. Right. You know, and it sounds like for that goal, even core isn't enough because you still don't have the themes. Like, I mean, do we all go home? Like, well, yeah, yeah. If, you, I mean, if you have it in core, odds are that the themes, if they're doing things quote unquote the right way, which you know some percentage of them is going to not, it'll be close enough. Like I think, which is which is that was the micro formats to right. plugin philosophy. Right. As long as most of the themes were close to the standardized, right. then we had a chance of being if, if we put things in the right place and hoping that it would mess up the themes. Yeah. And so again, to me, it seems like there's not a lot of difference in what we can do in that plugin versus what we can do. I mean, some themes won't get there, but they won't get there either way. And, and regardless, things aren't going to happen in core unless you have enough people interested in it. And if you can get as far as you can with the plugin experience and have providers provide a nice integrated experience that uses marketing language to, to encourage and entice users based on features and value that the actual customer is getting, you can get pretty close. And then things will naturally migrate into core because people will be like, look, you know, 30% of, of WordPress installs are using this. Obviously, it needs to go. That's when that happens. So, but and also, yeah, we never hear that. From, from a product point of view, I still think that we need to be talking about a website that feels like Twitter with categories. In other words, it's a stream-based site with a bunch of categories that you just don't shit into, right? That's what most of our indie websites are, and we're happy with that. My wife has a site for her, her construction company, and she's got all sorts of crap and structured stuff. And by the way, she may turn on comments somewhere. She's in a completely different category of user than what we're talking about. This is what you talked about. You're, you're talking about I mean, it's crazy, crazy frames. Again, I'm trying to segment our problem away by saying is if we were to say we're primarily targeting stream-based social sites with an occasional plugin module to do carousels, and that, that's wild and crazy by our standards, we can actually define this problem down a way. It's just, I feel like if we don't do some pruning of the tree, we'll never really get anything done. So if I go to WordPress.com, I want to just use their little wizard to create a brand new website, right? Yeah. And they give you four options, yep. right? And then within those, you get three themes, yep. and then you get a website. Now that's 12, that's not a huge number. No, that's not. Right? So I just wonder, is that sufficient low hanging fruit? Or again, is that the group of people who are so you, need, here, you just right? need enough themes. You don't need every theme under the sun. Right? Which ones, right? So this is why I've identified these. These are the ones that get presented to people as right. they start their life with a website. If they start that by going WordPress by all, so it's but it's typically free and then sometimes I upgrade them. It's a pretty constrained set of themes there yep. that you either have to, I don't know, and I don't know enough these days about how that works, whether those are very common themes or they're developed by core, or can you get in and they're, they help use, contribute uh, to them? Basically, a series of pre approved ones. Right. Yeah. So technically, there's a version of a sent person there, but it has all the micro formats stripped out. Right. Because that was not considered acceptable by the dot com. Right, so the question is, is there a lobbying come marketing come relationship opportunity or challenge there to get into that group of people? You know, just trying to find where are these? I would bottleneck. Yeah. Yeah. I would call, I mean, you have to think of WordPress.com not as WordPress. You have to think of WordPress.com as a separate entity that just happens to use WordPress. However, they it's are a, a bottleneck through like where yes. you yeah. so they're going to, so that's thinking about where you get your wood behind the arrow. Yeah. Fair. You know, unlike a host like you guys who want to do the right thing, right? It's, it, Right, and, we can, and you can make them all happen internally, but this is kind of the eight hundred pound gorilla. I, I agree. They have more volume. And does Matt ever have? Does it, I don't know. Where does he fit in this world these days? Like, I used um, to know him years ago. Touch him. Somebody, I believe it was you. That was me. Um, yeah. Fed a question up at work. At work, at work can't be you last week yes. in Paris. I asked him, "Hey, you tracking the open web, the indie web? What do you think about web mention? What do you think about micro.blog? And he was like. It's great, doesn't matter if nobody uses it, right? He's like, standards are interesting, but nothing matters if the user experience isn't good and people aren't using it. So I think he's right, and I think all the things we've been talking about actually align with that really well, right? At the end of the day, the thing that's going to make the most impact is not worrying about getting into core necessarily right away, not worrying about any of this. Make a really good experience. Make it really easy. That's and then what we've been doing. Get, yeah, We're and I think, it up on the other stuff. I think we've got to get much better even. And then you need people to package it, and we'll package it. I think other people will start to package it as well. Um, so I think we're just, it's just, yeah. we're doing the right things. We're artisanal plugins. Yes. Very much. So more work on the bundle, maybe a wizard, more yes. thinking about the defaults. Yes. Um, so then we also need a theme that looks good then? 
because some press is reasonable. We have well, at least one. So yeah. it's independent publisher. Yeah. That's yeah. Weird too. So it, again, and then and then documented at least on our end, so that uh, the other groups that want to do yeah. it have, have a good pointer to it. That's so See, these good. these are good 2017 right. goals. Yeah. Yep. Who in the community is the UX expert who really wants to dive in and spend some dozens of hours on uh, it? On which piece? The, wizard. That, the, the bundle, the wizard, that, that onboarding flow. Well, we have a few UX experts. We have a ton. I'm a product person, so oh, I yeah. definitely can help. Okay. Um, I'm a UX person, and I can help. Okay. So if you want to tag team, I'm happy to do that. Okay. Yeah, front end. Front end engineer right here. Front end design. No, 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 no. That'd be five minute cool. warning. Good. We're good. Do you so have like any closing but, statements to make? Or yeah. But, but so how about we make an action item that yeah. we'll, we'll, have an email, we'll have an email. We'll have an email introduction like, and we'll talk about. Perfectly it. timed with action items so, and volunteer. At the very least, I'm using five. Yeah, you're using five. Yeah. Because at the very at the very least, I think what we would recommend is some changes to the onboarding of the portal, right? For right. someone's why all the changes we've made in the last year have been Scott Jensen. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, this strikes me as awesome low hanging fruit. We can yeah. do something yeah. great with yeah. yeah. Oh, and as, as, as a follow up, I'm, I'm, working, I'm also going to contact you this change the website. Just it's very yeah. parallel, but it's, I think it's also nice to catch that as well. Um. I, I will volunteer myself as someone who will write an explanatory blog post when this is done yes. and push awesome. it out to That's the great. networks so that can use it. Awesome. <coughs> great. And we actually kind of have a list of things to do and people who can do them. That's, that's huge. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty successful yeah. for a one hour that's session. Working, right? Okay. <laughs> right. So. Historic moment. I just want to get Historic. Out. No. Uh, also, I updated WordPress. I'm a retired historian. I like to have these for. Like <laughs> <laughs> I have to make, I have to make a silly <laughs> way. No, no, no. I'm not. <laughs>